Hey guys, this is part two. If you haven't seen part one, it'll make more sense because I kind of show the setup of the scope and power supply and so on, and we kind of bring up the power supply. We, we look at the card, the schematic, kind of go through that. This one, we're going to just look at the, uh, we're going to run it at full power, probably a little bit over maybe even, but we're going to run it at full power and see if we can do it without a heat sink. So, unlike the class AB that needs, you know, a nice heat sink, we're going to see if this class D especially with the GANFET, can run without a heat sink. All right? Uh, that's going to be pretty neat. And uh, the other thing I think we're going to do is we're going to look at the input power. So I've got a hand tank current probe looking at uh, one of the voltage rails, and then we'll look at the voltage down here on the board with the differential probe. Okay? Hey, guys, uh, subscribe if you haven't done so, and uh, like the video if you like it. Check out part one where I kind of talk about all this stuff and there's gonna be a part three at least uh, maybe an even another one where we're gonna look at distortion okay part one we kind of looked at the flatness of the gain a uh, body plot part two is gonna be the thermal aspects and kind of the voltage ripple and current ripple coming into it and uh, so hope you like it let's do it okay the blue one is the output and you can see the reading down here we're at 10, 11 volts. Let's see how high we can go. Uh, I've got my power spike cranked up to about 31 volts, about as high as I think I can go. So, uh oh. We're about 33.6, and then. Oh, and then I, I hit the max of my power spike. So, look at that. The phase is right on top of each other, the input and output. So they're right in phase, that's awesome. But then right, uh oh, right there. Anyway, I got 36 uh, volts out, 36 volts RMS. Okay, now we'll come over and take a look at the heat. Hey, you know what? Before we do that, I want to show you something here. I'm going to turn on, what I did is I put uh, the differential probe on the voltage rail and I AC coupled it okay so that's channel one that's yellow one and then let's look at the current coming out of my lab supply okay that's channel three so now we got all the channels turned on so look at channel like here's channel one the voltage and channel three is the current okay and we want to see what it looks like so look at the blue one it's coming up you can see the ripple current on it. And you can see the the voltage uh, ripple. We're not up as high as we were. Let's, there's 20 volts out. Let's go up to 36. That's where we were, right? But you can see the ripple voltage, that yellow. That's 400 millivolts per division. Okay, I'm at 37. Look, it's just starting to get distorted right there. So around 35 volts. That's pretty cool because I only got 31 volts, you know, plus my 31 volts coming in. But look at that yellow one. So if you wanted to get some of that ripple out, you just have to add some more capacitors to get a little flatter line there. Just wanted to point that out to you. That's something you like to check is to see how clean your power supply voltage is. Okay, now let's go look at the temperature on All the right, board. Alright, so we've been running, and then I turned it off, and it's kind of cooling down a little bit now, but I'll just kind of give you an idea of what the board looks like. I'll turn the camera this way. You can see the inductors are the hot guys. The transistors are running down the side here. Over here are the dark things. The cold things are the capacitors. This bar right here tells the temperature. It starts dark, blue, green, yellow, red, white. And the way this thing works is, you see that guy right there, the center marker. Alright, so you see that center marker right there? That, if I, wherever I put that, it shows me the temperature here. Meanwhile, there's this green one chasing whatever the coldest spot is, and there's a red one over here chasing the hot spot. And that red one's real hard for you to see. So, what I try to do is I look at that red one, and then I put this center cursor over the hot spot so you can see up here. Okay? So, okay, now I'm going to adjust the camera down here so I can get the angle of the camera, of the thermal camera. And we'll focus on that. Okay, we'll focus on this. 
So, and it's these bottom, this channel down here is the one we want to focus on, okay? Because that's the one that, okay, this channel down here is the one that's going to get hot. That's the one we're powering up, okay? So let me reach down and grab the pot. And you see those transistors? I'll try to put them on. But right now, things are like 45 degrees. Then doctor, it's like 58, starting to cool down. But even when it's just idling, uh, the inductors stay warm. You can see how hot that one is. Just because they're smoothing that uh, wave shape into a sine wave. Okay, we're cranking it up. The output is, whoa, 24, 28, 30, 35 volts right there on the output. Okay, crank it down just a little bit. Okay, right there, about 30, just under 35, 34.9. Okay, now we'll see how hot this thing gets. I've got the... Uh, the center of the screen right on that inductor, the hot spot. Now if I move over here on the transistor, see there's still 52, if I, uh oh. All right guys, my, this scene auto shuts off on me. I don't know how to stop that, so sorry about that. But meanwhile, it's been a few minutes and I don't see the temperatures really changing much. Uh, the inductor's around 62. They're just barely hotter than they were when it was uh, just idling. And the transistor, if I try to focus that on there, try to find the white spot there, it's like, yeah, maybe they've raised 60 C too. Now, one thing about it is when you, as far as board placement, you want things close so your power loops are, your current loops are tight. At the same time, though, um, you know, it's kind of like two things working against each other. When you put things close, they self-heat each other, you know, so thermally you want them far apart, right? Electrically you want them close, so there is a, a little bit of a trade there, so when you're routing and placing parts and placing copper on the board, you, you can kind of use your copper to help you um, direct heat a little bit. But anyway, yeah, they say no heat sink, I believe them. It's pretty cold in my shop here. I'm probably 14C, and so we're raising, you know, 34, you know, 40 degrees, 50 degrees, I guess. So if we're raising 50 degrees, almost 35 volts out RMS. Meanwhile, see that inductor? It's still kind of warm. It's not much cooler than this guy, probably. This guy's 60, almost 65. That guy is like 56, you can't see it. Sorry, I'm going off screen there, but that guy right there, look at that, if I angle it that way, so you can see him, uh, if I get this temperature on him. Anyway, it's kind of hard to do. The point is, is uh, these things run efficiently. <laughs> well, that's what Class D does, but these, uh, these darn little GAN fits are super impressive. Hey guys, just warming up here a little bit. My shop's kind of chilly, so letting these resistors warm me up. <laughs> the board's actually not too bad, but no, seriously, that was pretty cool, right? I mean, so, you know, pun intended. Uh, no big heat sink needed. This guy, those parts are extremely small. It's They're really the die of the part. It's kind of neat. If you took the MOSFET die out of this package, it would be much smaller too, but still not near as small as the GAN. So really cool. Now this design was just a kind of a discreet design for this evaluation. It's not using any of the, the cool class D amplifier chips, you know, for controlling this thing. But they did a really cool job with the design. I think it's pretty neat. And hey, we took it full power, actually a little over full power and no heat sink required. We only did one channel, but you could see how the other channel was still kind of warm because just sitting there, it's actually still dissipating some heat. And it doesn't seem to dissipate a whole lot more heat when you take it up full power. So, wow, no heat sink. Pretty cool. <laughs> Wave of the future. Hey guys, um, thumbs up if you like the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't done that. You know, share them too, share the videos. And uh, by the way, I've got a link below for the first video because I didn't go through the setup and all that, which I did in the other video. So if you haven't seen that, 
you know might make more sense if you kind of watch that one but anyway just wanted to show the temperature of the board and also the power supply you know what it looks like when you're you know using this hand tech current probe to look at the current look at the voltage down here on the board with the differential probe and uh you know so hopefully that was informative and you liked it so let me know in the comments what you guys think and I have uh, one more video I think I'm going to do where we're going to do some more um, signal integrity stuff. Okay, we're looking at distortion uh, from the board. Okay, that will be the next video. Okay, guys, thumbs up. We'll see you next time. <laughs>